Hello everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. I'm here with my guest stars. I'm WWE fan 0599 and you have failed this city. Justin watches movies. And we're all here to do the Academy Awards 2015 predictions. That's right. I'm doing it a little differently this year. Because the last couple of years when I did Academy Awards predictions, it would just be me solo, just me saying my predictions. But this time, it's with my two lovely guests, Justin Watches Movies and WWE Fan 0599. We're going to go through each category. All three of us are going to say our predictions based on what we think think the Academy is going to choose to win that certain category. We'll ma even make little comments like about snubs and all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's get this started. Now, we got Best Actor. We have Steve Carell, Foxcatcher, Bradley Cooper, American Sniper, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Im Imitation Game, Michael Keaton for Birdman, and Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything. So... Justin, who do, you, who do you predict will win this category? You know, it's a tough one. Um, I feel like Steve Carell and Bradley Cooper will be the weakest ones. And it really comes down to Benedict Cumberbatch, Eddie Redmayne, and Michael Keaton. All three gave career-transforming performances. Um, especially Redmayne for what he did as um, Stephen Hawking. Mm -hmm. but I really think it's going to be come down to Benedict Cumberbatch and Michael Keaton, and I think, I think the Oscars are going to give it to Michael Keaton for Birdman. Cool. And you, WWE fan, what do you predict for this category? Well, I think the one that shouldn't <clears throat> really. Well, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I don't. As we're making this video, but I think you could scratch Bradley Cooper out of this. That's just how I feel. Um. I don't think it's going to be Steve Crow. I don't think it's going to be Cumberbatch. It's going to be really be Michael Keaton or Eddie Redmayne, but I'm going to go with my gut, and I'm going to think it's going to be Michael Keaton because Michael Keaton gave a fantastic performance in Birdman. That was like... That was a welcome back, Michael Keaton. Now, that was just such a fantastic performance. I hope he wins. Cool. And Tony? All these actors, they gave it their all in these movies. They really did. They did. But I had to think really hard between Michael Keaton and Eddie Redmayne. And I'm going to go risky here, but I, I'm i predicting it's Eddie Redmayne on this one. I really cool. feel like the Academy, because, you know, he's Stephen Hawking. thinking because of what Eddie Redmayne did with the character, the Academy might choose him to win this category. So... I'm going to have to go with Eddie Redmayne, The Theory of Everything, to win Best Actor. Okay. So, real quick, though. Have you seen The Theory of Everything? No, I haven't. I still have to watch it. Yeah, check that out. Now, we're going to talk about snubs real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jake Gyllenhaal, Nightcrawler. Come on. You may definitely put that over Bradley Cooper. And then David Oyelowo. Um, over Steve Crow. I mean, David Oyelowo and Selma, his performance, his speeches, it was emotional. It was crazy good. And Nightcrawler just was disturbing as can be. So those are my snubs. I think that those two people should have been uh, nominated. I'll leave my, I'll leave it, I'll leave it there, guys. You can, uh, um, let's see. Um, you know, if, if Stephen Crow, uh, Stephen, Steve Crow, didn't have all that makeup, I don't think the performance would have been that much of a huge deal if it wasn't for all that makeup. So, and, come on. Just like Justin. Where is Jake Gyllenhaal? Where is he? Of course, we're going to, no offense, but we're going to, of course, you know, we're going to nominate A. Redman because he played the disabled person, and we're going to give it to Steve Quell because he put himself into makeup, but no. We're not going to give it to someone who actually put on a life change. Like, he embodied this character. I didn't see Jake Gyllenhaal. I saw a creep. A really disturbing person in this entire movie. And Jake Gyllenhaal not only should have gotten nominated, but me to win the best actor. I have to agree with you, Justin, and WWE fan. I still have yet to see, 
But I'm sure David Oyelowo, he gave a great performance in Martin Luther King. You know, just by what I see in the trailers, I can already see it. But I totally agree with Jake Gyllenhaal, though. I mean, uh, now, I'm not going to say take out this and that, because like I said, each role is different. Each actor yeah. gives their yeah. all, depending what role they give. But all I will say is that why would you uh, snub Jake Gyllenhaal, who... Like you guys said, he transformed himself. And Nightcrawler, I thought it was a good movie. It's not one of my favorites of 2014, but I did think it was a straight-up good movie. It kept my attention. And that reason is because, well, Dan Gilroy's direction was definitely one of the things that kept my attention. And the overall storyline, you know, the writing was clever and original. Mm -hmm. But Jake Gyllenhaal, you needed that performance to keep the direction and the writing more stronger. And he really held on his own. He basically carried that movie on his own when you think about it. Yeah, you had supporters like Rene Russo and all that, but he's the one. No, You're actually. really focused. He is basically the one that makes the movie. So, yeah, I agree. He was totally snubbed for Best Actor. Now we go into Best Actress. We have here Marianne Cotillard, Two Days, One Night, Felicity Jones, The Theory of Everything, Julian Moore, Still Alice, Rosemond Pike for Gone Girl, and Reese Witherspoon for Wild. So, Justin, who do you predict will win this category? All right, for starting off, uh, I have not seen Still Hallows with Julianne Moore, and I have not seen Two Days, One Night with Marion Contillard. I do think Julianne Moore will win it just because of all the buzz she's been getting for it. Um, but personally, I really liked Reese Witherspoon in Wild. It's not the best movie, but like comparing she, it to Nightcrawler. She like, she like carried it on her own? Compared it to comparing it to Nightcrawler, it's it was an okay film, but she carried that film on her own. It's mostly her, and I really liked her performance in there. Felicity Jones, she was sweet in the theory of everything. Everybody's raising, uh, raving about Rosamund Pike, but with the buzz that everything is going on right now and how the Oscars are looking at it, I think it's going to go to Julianne Moore. Cool. For still Alice, but. Um, you know, personal favorite, Reese Witherspoon, but, you know, you got to look at how everybody else is looking at it. True. That's very true. And then UW? Uh, like, uh, personal favorite, I would like to see, you know, even though I haven't seen the movie, but with all the praise and stuff, I would like to see Rosamund Pike win for Gone Girl. I really would like to, you know, something different for once, and I hear she does give a really great performance, but knowing the Academy, it's probably going to be Julianne Moore for Still Alice. Well, I guess the three of us agree because that's what I'm predicting too. Now, who would have I preferred to win this? Honestly, I would have preferred Roseman Pike because, I mean, Justin, you've seen the movie. You've seen how crazy, how yep. absolutely crazy she gets in Gone Girl. I mean, holy shit. That's all I'm going to say. Like, you know, here's, here's, I, I would, I would uh, love it if she won, but... I don't think the Academy is going to give it to her because it feels like for the most part, the ones who win the award are the ones who played something when people are ill. And you know, that's fine, but I would like something a little more different from that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to have to predict Julian Moore still Alice for this one. The next one we go into is Best Supporting Actor. We got Robert Duvall, The Judge, Ethan Hawke, Boyhood, Edward Norton, Birdman, Mark Ruffalo, Foxcatcher, uh-huh, and then J.K. Simmons, Whiplash. Um, Justin? Okay, this one's a little bit tough because two people in there gave crazy good performances on par with the actors, the main actors in the film, and that's J.K. Simmons and Edward Norton. Yeah. And they were... Crazy good. Uh, J.K. Simmons and Edward Norton um, is going to come down to really them two. I feel like Robert Duvall was the one they just threw in there. Like, here, we just... Yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I was kind of shocked to see that Robert Duvall in there, but congratulations to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Ethan Hawke, um, not really. Mark Ruffalo um, was pretty good. 
I think it's going to go to J.K. Simmons. He, God, I can't wait to see Whiplash again. It was it was so crazy good in that film. Yeah, Whiplash was fr- was freaking great. Um, UW, what do you predict? I'd say Robert. Du- I'm only king. Uh, J.K. Simmons. He's winning this. Uh, listen, um, Edward Norton was fantastic in Birdman. He was the second best part of that movie, acting wise, in my opinion. But J.K. Simmons blew my mind in Whiplash. He really did. He hit the nail on the coffin with this character. This mean, ruthless teacher that wants greatness basically out of his students. And he, he just gave so much out of that movie. He definitely deserves to win Best Supporting Actor. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I have to say J.K. J. Simmons for Web Flash. I mean, I saw this category, and right off the bat, I already said it in my mind, J.K. Simmons. I would be repeating everything you said, Justin, and UW, but I agree. J.K. Simmons, man, did he play one crazy asshole. And I said this in my movie review, if J. Jonas Jameson faced him, he would run out like a little girl, because that's how scary this guy is. For Best Supporting Actress, we got Patricia Arquette for Boyhood, Laura Dern for Wild, Kira Knightley for The Imitation Game, Emma Stone for Birdman, and Meryl Streep for <laughs> Emma <Emperor laughs> <Woods. laughs> Justin? This is a cat category that I feel like it's rather weak. There's not like anybody that really stood out for me that was amazing. Um, that's why it's the one that I just can't really decide on. I feel, and I hate to say it, well, they will give the not Oscar to Meryl Streep. But Emma Stone was really good. Laura Dern, you can just cross her out. Kira Knightley, I think you can cross her out. I mean, Meryl Streep, you've seen Into the Woods, Tony, so you know. Um, yeah, i seen that. She, she was great in the movie. I'm not going to deny it. I thought she was great in Into the Woods. I'm not going to deny but that. not Oscar-worthy great. No, uh, I, I, I agree with that, honestly. I'm getting kind of tired of the Academy kind of nominating her the same year. You know, I mean, like last year, Justin, didn't she get nominated for that August Osage County movie? Well, I heard she was actually kind of great in that movie, like award-worthy yeah. great in that movie, so... Yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally get Justin's Oscar point. Worthy. She was Oscar-worthy in uh, August Osage County, but I don't... I'm gonna go yeah, with in, in terms of Oscar worthy, no, I don't think so. But in terms of like giving a genuinely very good performance, I think yeah, she was ve- like very good to me. You know what? I'm just gonna say Patricia for Boyhood. Okay. I'm gonna go with her. UW. Um, you know, I would love to see Emma Stone win for Birdman. I thought she was. Uh, everyone underrates her performance in that movie. I thought she was fantastic in that movie. And, you know, a lot of people don't really talk about her performance, which is a shame. I thought she was great in the movie. I have a feeling the Academy's going to give it to Patricia Arquette. Justin does have a point because I always think this every year. Every time they nominate Meryl Streep, you know, I, last year I know she actually didn't win, which was a huge surprise to me but it kind of pissed me off because I predicted she would win. So this year, because of what happened last year with her actually not winning for once, so that way I could avoid that little curveball in case it does happen, I'm going to predict Patricia Arquette for Boyhood. I think the Oscars will give it to her. I have a Um, snub real quick. Any any snub? Oh, okay. Tilda Swinton for Snowpiercer. Yes. Oh, dude. Dear. Oh, man, she was so good in that movie. Now, I think she could have took over Meryl Streep's place. Or even Laura just... Dern. Yeah, um, Laura, I think Laura Dern was a little bit better than Meryl Streep, though. Laura Dern had a little less screen time than Meryl Streep. But uh, I just think Tilda Swinton, she was really good in um, Snowpiercer, and she had a lot of makeup, and she didn't even look like her. But so I didn't even know just... that was her until yeah. I looked on IMDb. I was like, that was her? Yeah, I'll even say that that was the snub for this category. You know, she was fantastic. She played, you know, a person that, like with J.K. Simmons, you wanted to punch in the face. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll say I'm, I'm just gonna say this. I would have hated to have that character as my grandma. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, me too. Now for best director, we got. Uh, I, I always butcher the last name. Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu Birdman. Hopefully I got Inaritu. that right. You tried. You tried um, your best. And we have they... Richard Linklater for Boyhood, Bennett Miller for Foxcatcher, Wes Anderson for The Grand Budapest Hotel, and Morden Tildum for The Imitation Game. So, Justin, who do you think will win Best Director? First off, I would like to congratulate Wes Anderson for wherever he is right now for um, getting that uh, nominee because Wes Anderson is a truly different director than anybody. I'm glad to see he got nominated for Grand Poo Best Hotel. It's about time. I'm not saying that he's going to get – he's not going to win it. Uh, Bennett yeah, Miller, yeah. I think he was the biggest surprise. I would like to see the director for um, – Whiplash to be in there, yes. But but for directing, this is a crazy competition because Boyhood and Birdman are two completely different films, but have some of the best directing I've ever seen. Boyhood, yes. for it being over twelve years, and oh, the editing, okay. directing, and have it seem like it's all one linear line and just not all broken up into different pieces. It felt really good. Birdman, how it felt like it was just one long continuous shot. And the only time that you really saw any change is when it was like nighttime. But I think it's going to go to Birdman. Or not Birdman, sorry. Boyhood. Boyhood. I think it's going to go Boyhood. Richard Linklater is going to get the, uh, the Oscar. He deserves it uh, for all the efforts he did with creating a film that takes place over 12 years and makes it feel just like it's real and it's not choppy or broken up into different sections of one person's life. It all just feels smoothed out and Boyhood's going to win it. Richard Linklater, um, even though it's not his best picture, in my opinion, but he's going to get it. Here's the one that I want to win and I think is going to win. Alejandro Gonzalez in Urito is going to win. I mean, the way he direct. Listen, I respect what Boyhood did. But man, what this movie did, it felt like one continuous shot. No cuts, no nothing. Even the scene where, you know, um, Emma Stone and uh, Edward Norton start making out, it pans right to the bottom and we see the play is starting. You know, I was like, whoa, it's just so mind-blowing with this filmmaking. And that's why I think Alejandro Gonzalez and Rito should win for Birdman. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Well, W, me and you are on the same page. I, too, predict that it's gonna, uh, it, that's going to get Best Director. Alejandro Gonzalez in a redo for Birdman. And I'll be happy, honestly, if Richard Linklater does win. I mean, if Alejandro does win, I really won't complain about that either. Did any of you have any snubs before? I do went? have a snub. Danny, Dan Goyer, Goyer, or? Gilroy. Gilroy. For Nightcrawler, where was he in this category? To me, that was the best directed film of the year. I know, I know, a lot of people are gonna be disagreeing with me with that, but the way they get the shots of L.A. in that movie is beautiful. I mean, beautiful, and it was just fantastic. I felt like he got snubbed for best director. I think Fox Cash should have been in there. But the director of Whiplash and Nightcrawler, they should have made their way in there. I could pretty much agree with you two. And now we're going to get into what's possibly my favorite category. Best Animated Feature Film. Ah, there's nothing I love more than a nice animation movie that will help me escape this world we all call reality. So for Best Animated Feature, we got Big Hero 6. The Box Trolls, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Song of the Sea, and The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. And and what, and what, Tony? There, there's got to be one more. And what? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but first let's get to our predictions. Okay. So, Justin, who do, what do you think will get Best Animated Feature? There's essentially like three you can cross out. Box Trolls, Song of the Sea, and The Last uh, Princess. Oh, uh, Princess Kaguya? 
Booyah. The Booyah. latest Studio Ghibli film, which I do need to see. Um, Me too. Big Hero 6 is personally my favorite out of all of those. I really love Big Hero 6. It wasn't Frozen, in my opinion, um, but it definitely was a heartwarming, overall fun family film. Everybody's praising more of How to Train Your Dragon 2. A lot of people make it. It's in their top 10 list. A lot of people like it. I think I'm going to go with uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2 to be uh, the best animated feature film, but personally my favorite is Big Hero 6. Tony already knows this. The one that I want to win and is going to win is going to be How to Train Your Dragon 2. I haven't seen an anime film this great since Toy Story 3. There hasn't been an anime film that has blown my mind this much since Toy Story 3. How to Train Your Dragon 2 is fantastic. I agree with you, Justin. I would say it was a good year for anime movies. Not a great year, in my opinion, but a good year. I liked How to Train Dragon 2. I liked Pe Mr. Peabody and Sherman. I liked the Lego movie. Um, you know, there were a lot of good ones out there. The Book of Life, I liked that one. But I agree with you, Justin. Out of all those animated movies, I did enjoy Big Hero 6 the most. I had a lot of fun with that movie. It may not be as good as movies like, say, Tangle or Wreck-It Ralph, in my opinion, but I still thought it was a really good animated movie that was very heartwarming and really touched on a subject that not many animated movies go through. So, yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with you guys, How to Train Your Dragon 2. And I like that movie, so I really wouldn't complain if it wins Best Animated Feature, in all honesty. So, that's my prediction. Snubs. The Lego, Lego movie. movie. Where was the Lego movie? I'm pissed. Uh, me too. When I heard that there was no Lego movie, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Listen, like I said, even though I thought How to Train Your Dragon 2 was better, I still thought Lego Movie was a fantastic animated movie and should have been in there. I wouldn't even been mad if it won. What is the Academy thinking? Oh, because it has Legos. It's not my favorite animated film of the year. I think Big Hero 6 uh, has that spot. It definitely is better than How to Train Your Dragon in my opinion. But it's you cannot deny that it is one of the most talked about films of the year. Yeah. It's everybody loved it. Or not everybody loved it. A lot of people loved it. Everybody loved like Chris Pratt and they went crazy for it. And it's came out in February, which was almost a year ago. And for it to still have that generate that talk and buzz mm -hmm. was pretty big and I think even the people that they did the nominations for the other morning they were shocked too like where's how to where's the Lego movie box trolls definitely should have been taken out the Lego movie should have put you place that even though yeah personally do I find Lego movie overrated yes do I think it's a good movie though oh you bet I still enjoyed the movie yeah you can say all you want whether you hated the movie because I know some people that downright hated the Lego movie whether you hated it liked it loved it you know you can't deny that it was something unique you know it was inventive it was creative it was clever it was original you know it was a very well-made movie and there was truly something special so yeah even if uh, even though i liked the movie and didn't love it like a lot of people do i i still think it deserved a nomination i could see why a lot of people would be upset about it i'm personally really bummed about this but um i guess it is what it is you know we can't change what the oscars decides to do so yeah now we go into best Adapted screenplay. We got American Sniper by Jason Hall, The Imitation Game by Gra Graham Moore, Inherent Vice by Paul Thomas Anderson, The Theory of Everything by Anthony McCartan, and Whiplash by Damien Chazelle. So what do you think, Justin? I'm glad to see Whiplash getting some love up in there. Um, adapted screenplay. I was surprised to see American Sniper in there. But... They're all being adapted and stuff. They've all were handled really well. Um, I just saw Inherent Vice, and that was there was a lot to handle in that. Uh, uh, was it one trippy movie? It was. It's it's very confusing. I uploaded my video for that if you guys want to check that out. But it's a film that you guys have to. We're getting off topic. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Imitation Game. I think that. 
I mean, personally, Whiplash is crazy good, but I think Imitation Game, it's another one where Oscars will look at it like it was a struggle. Benedict Cumberbatch playing um, homosexual and uh, war and stuff. I think that it's going to go to the Imitation Game, written by Graham Moore. And then UW, what do you think um, for Best Adapted? Um, I would love to see Whiplash win Best Adapted Screenplay. I really would. But I have a feeling they're going to give it to the Theory of Everything. Personally, I would love to see Whiplash get some love and get that Best Adapted Screenplay. I'm going to be pretty risky here. I'll say Whiplash for this one. So now we go into Best Original Screenplay. Okay, so Best Original Screenplay, we got Birdman by Alejandro Inaritu, Nicholas Gia Cobone, Alexander Denny Larice Jr., and Armando Bow, Boyhood by Richard Linklater, Foxcatcher by E. Max Fry and Dan Futterman, The Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson and Hugo Guinness, Guinness, sorry if I mispronounced that, and Nightcrawler by Dan Gilroy. So, Justin. What do you think? Personally, a favorite. Whip Nightcrawler has a crazy good story that just came out of nowhere. Boyhood. When you really look at Boyhood, it's just about a child in life. There's like nothing crazy interesting about it. It's it's handled perfectly, but it just has nothing like truly that stands out. That's like about the script. It's just about a child's life. Now, Birdman... because yeah, it just deals with, like, real life. Yeah, Birdman has a very interesting story to it. Foxcatcher... Wouldn't Foxcatcher be an adapted screenplay because it's based on real life? I'm not sure. But, I'm not sure either. I mean, that's, that story was actually pretty crazy. Um, I'm going to go with Birdman. You know, I would love to see Nightcrawler get that Oscar for best original screenplay because the screenplay was great in that movie. But I think they're going to give it to Birdman for this one. So, WWE fan, you might be happy with this, but I'm going to predict Nightcrawler on this one. And in terms of how the screenplay was written, I just thought it was well done, and I feel the Academy is going to feel something really original out of that screenplay. So I'm going to predict they're going to pick Nightcrawler, and hopefully that's a category Nightcrawler will at least win. So now we go into Best Cinematography, Birdman from Emmanuel Lubisky, The Grand Budapest Hotel by Robert Yeoman, Ida by Lukacs Zal and Ritzard Lentzewski. Hold on, hold on. You gotta do it like she did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner by Dick Poop. <laughs> 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 oh man, uh, that must have been embarrassing for that woman. Uh, the real name, just for those wondering, it's Dick Pope. Just for those wondering. Yes. And then Unbroken <laughs> by Roger Deakins. Cinematography. Um, you know, actually, Unbroken was, you know, it was a rather weak movie in my opinion, but it was, it looked really good. Oh my God, dude, it looked beautiful. Grand Budapest Hotel, just like every other Wes Anderson film, looks amazing. Yes. But I think it seems like every Oscar season, there's always that one film that just wins all the awards. You know, it was Gravity last year that won a shit ton of awards. 12 Years a Slave. I think it's going to go to Birdman. What about you, W? What do you this, the, this is the one I want to win, and this is the one I think is going to win. Birdman. I mean, we were just talking about it. Just, wow. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. I, I don't even have to say anything. I have to agree with you guys. I think they're going to vote for Birdman. The way that movie just looked on a technical level the whole time. Yeah, just wow. Best visual effects. Captain America the Winter Soldier. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Ga Guardians of the Galaxy. Interstellar. X-Men Days of Future Past. Justin... What do you think? Geez, Interstellar. It's going to be Interstellar. Okay, all of them were all really good. Dawn of Planet Apes looked amazing. Um, some of the best visual effects on for the apes. 
Um, but yeah. it's gonna. I I think it's gonna go to Interstellar. If you guys know me, c come on, it's gonna be Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's the one I want to win, and that's the one that's probably gonna win. I mean, it, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. They made that movie look so amazing. I mean. They made them look like actual apes. I even think those were actors. I thought those were actual apes. You know, that's how convincing they make these apes look. This is honestly the category I want to win and I predict is going to win. That is Interstellar. All of these visuals on these movies, Guardians, Captain America, Dawn, X-Men, they all look flat out great. But I mean, Interstellar, you can't deny how freaking... <laughs> Space looked, especially space. Uh, everything else about Interstellar looked amazing, especially the scene where they're up in space. Holy shit, I have never lost my mind over something so beautiful and so mesmerizing in such a long time and watching films, honestly. I was like, it literally took my breath away looking at the visuals in Interstellar. I hope Interstellar wins this one, and it's the one I'm predicting the Academy will choose to win. Best documentary feature, we got Citizen Four, Finding Vivian Mayer, that's the only documentary I've heard of in this one, Last Days in Vietnam, The Salt of the Earth, and Varunga. I've only heard two of in these. I've heard of Citizen Four. It's playing at one of my local theaters um, next week. I usually go with the one that I've heard the most of when it comes to these ones. And I'm just going to go with Citizen Four. I'm going to go with Last Days in Vietnam. And then for me, I'm going to go with Finding Vivian Mayer. Meyer. Um, however you pronounce it, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I re I'm really sorry about that. But yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Best Documentary, Short Subject, Crisis Hotline Veterans, Press One, Joanna, Our Curse, The Reaper, and White Earth. What do you think, Justin? The Reaper. White Earth. I'll go with Justin, The Reaper. Best Film Editing, we got American Sniper, Boyhood, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, and Whiplash. What do you think for best film editing, Justin? And this is what I'm talking about for Boyhood. Boyhood had some of the best editing. I mean, you have 12 years of footage mm -hmm. on your hands, and you put it together into an almost three-hour film. <laughs> you have so much that you have to cut down. You have so much that you need to just... It's crazy because, like, like I said in, earlier when we were talking about the directing, and it feels it's not choppy. It's not it doesn't feel all broken up. It all feels cohesive and just smooth out. I think it's gonna go to Boyhood. UW. Um, best editing. I would love to see Whiplash get the win, but I know it's not going to. But I, I think Whiplash had some great editing, but obviously it's gonna go to Boyhood. I agree with what Justin said. You know, Boyhood could win. I could be wrong on this one. But uh, I'm going to probably go ahead and just predict Whiplash on this one. And I say Whiplash because, I mean, all those edits and cuts they made when Miles Teller would play the drums. Yeah, that the was would cut to JK, Or how they would cut to J.K. Simmons or, like, when they're on stage. You know, all of the editing to this movie, how it transitions just so smoothly and naturally. Boyhood could win this one. I could go, go wrong on this category, but I think this one will go to Whiplash. We go into best original song. Uh, we have Everything is Awesome. Everything is cool. <laughs> okay. The only category Lego movie is nominated for. Yeah. Um, Glory uh, from Selma. Great, uh, Grateful from Beyond the Lights. I'm, go I'm not going to miss you. For Glenn Campbell, I'll Be Me. And then Lost Stars. From Begin Again. Oh, God, I love that song. But uh, what did you predict, Justin? Fuck you, Oscars. I'm going to go with the Lego movie. Everything is awesome. <laughs> Though, right on, I man. really, 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 really love the song Lost Stars from Begin Again. That's one of the best film songs of this year. Not even in a movie, but in general, one of the best songs of this year. Oh, uh, dude. I agree with you there. Um, w... For best original um, song. I would love to see Everything is Awesome for the Lego movie. Mm -hmm. Just like Justin said, um, but he said for the other movie. Not only was it one of the, 
the best song from a movie. It was generally one of the the best song maybe from this year, but I think it's going to be Glory for Selma. I would okay. be surprised if they did give it to that though. Okay, you guys, it's obvious. I gotta go with everything is awesome. Everything. Oh, boy's awesome. coming through. I mean, I'll be honest. Um, if they choose Lost Stars. I mean, I love that song. Begin Again, not only is it, like, one of my favorite movies of 2014, without a doubt, it's one of my favorites of 2014, but the songs in that movie sound so terrific, and Lost Stars was just one of those, was just one of those songs that just really, really hit me. Exactly. But, yeah, I'm going to predict that they're going to go with everything is awesome from the Lego movie, and I think it's a well-deserved win, so let's hope that they'll get... Everything is awesome. Best production design. The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, Interstellar, Into the Woods, Mr. Turner. I think I'm going to go with The Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, Interstellar, a lot of it was CGI and visual effects. Um, Into the Woods, they had a pretty good production design. But I'm going to have to go with The Grand Budapest Hotel. I would love to see Interstellar win, but I've got to agree with uh, Justin. I think it's going to be the Grand Blue Best Hotel. Well, it looks like the three of us are on the same page because that's also my prediction. I think the Grand Budapest Hotel will win Best Production Design. For Best Live Action Short Film, we got Aya, Boogaloo and Graham, Butterlamp, Parvene, and The Phone Call. Sometimes when I really don't know, I haven't heard any of these, I pick the one that has a crazy title. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go with Boogaloo and Graham. Same with Justin. I love that title. I have to go with Boogaloo and Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with that movie, Aya. Now we go into Best Animated Short Film. We got The Big Picture, The Dam Keeper, Feast, me and my molten, and a single life. I'm gonna go with Feast. It's the only one I saw, and it was really cute. So Feast. I'm gonna go with the bigger picture. For those that don't know, uh, Feast is that short that came out before Big Hero Six started. And uh, Feast, you know, such a cute and adorable short film for those that love dogs. So Feast. Yeah, I, I think that's going to win Best Animated Short Film for sure. And now we're going to go into Best Sound Editing. We got American Sniper, Birdman, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, Interstellar, and Unbroken. Birdman. Uh, UW? I'm going to actually go with Interstellar. I thought it had some great sound editing in that movie. The Academy may go with that one as well, you know, so I'm predicting Interstellar. Without a doubt, Interstellar had amazing sound editing. Just wow. But I think the Academy is going to go more for Birdman, so my prediction for this one is Birdman. Now we go into Best Sound Mixing. American Sniper, Birdman, Interstellar, Unbroken, and Whiplash. What do you think, Justin? I'd like to just make a quick comment. Back in 2011, when one of the best films was ever released, and the Oscars snubbed the shit out of it. Oh, Drive? Yep. They only oh. gave it to the sound mixing. What the fuck? Okay. Um, just had to say that, because I was super pissed off that year. Um, sound mixing, they're pretty much all the same, except for Whiplash is in there, instead of The Hobbit. The Blush had some good sounds with all the drums and all the music, the background music, mixing it all together. I hope that Birdman doesn't do back-to-back -back with the sound uh, category, so I'm going to go with uh, Whiplash. Same here. I'm going to go with Whiplash. I think that had some great sound mixing in that movie. For this one, I'm going to predict American Sniper. Something tells me they might go with American Sniper. That's my prediction. And by the way, I have a real quick snub. Where was Night Where was Nightcrawler for sound mixing? The yeah, light, like during the driving scenes and all that. Where was that? Now we go on to best costume design. So we have the Grand Budapest Hotel, Inherent Vice, Into the Woods, Maleficent, and Mr. Turner. What do you think for best costume design, Justin? 
Well, I haven't seen Mr. Turner. Oh, had some pretty good costumes. Inherent Vice. The whole movie looked like it was in the 70s. It was pre- pretty good for that. Into the Woods. I feel like I could go. I feel like I could go either either to Into the Woods or Grand Budapest Hotel. Maleficent. Yeah. Oh, wow. Come on, actually, Maleficent. Um, I'm gonna go with Into the Woods. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with the Grand Budapest Hotel. I'm going to agree with Justin. I'll go with Into the Woods for best costume design. Now we go into best foreign language film. We got Ida or Ida from Poland, Livia Than from Russia, Tangerines from Estonia, Timbuktu from Mauritania. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. Forgive me for that. (laughs) (laughs) And then Wild Tales from Argentina. What do you think, Justin? Um, I've only heard of Ida and Leviathan, but Ida, I'm, I've seen that it's been nominated for other ones. So I'm going to go with Ida. Ida, All Ida, right. Ida, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, IUW? I'm going to go with Ida as well. So. Yep, um, same here. I'm going to go with Ida from Poland. I'm predicting that'll get Best Foreign Language Film. We go to Best Makeup and Hairstyling. For some reason, these get three nominees instead of five. Hell knows why, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we got only Foxcatcher, Guardians of the Galaxy, and then the Grand Budapest Hotel. So what do you think, Justin? I'm going to cross out Guardians of the Galaxy because there was a more of CGI and stuff in there. Yeah. Foxcatcher only... They only did makeup and hairstyling because of Steve Carell with his nose. I'm going to go with the Grand Budapest Hotel because there was a lot of different makeup and stuff for everybody. Was that Tilda Swinton in there? I'm going to go with the Grand Budapest Hotel. This one, I don't know if it's going to really shock you guys, but I'm going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. And it was it was Tilda Swinton in the Grand, Buda, Grand Budapest Hotel. I just looked it oh, up. Okay. Snowpiercer. For tilt to swing, yeah, for best makeup and hairstyling, that could have at least been in there. Yeah, they're crazy. It was a lot of makeup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they sure did. And now for me, I'm gonna go with Justin. I'll predict the Grand Budapest Hotel because I mean the makeup and hairstyling in that movie, man, it looked really good right there. Best original score, we mm-hmm. got the Grand Budapest Hotel from Alexandre Desplat, the Imitation Game from. Once again, Alexandre Displat. Wow, he got nominated twice. Whoa. And then we got Interstellar, Hans Zimmer, <clears throat> Mr. Turner by Gary Yershon, and The Theory of Everything by Johan Johansson. Oh, oh, God, okay, I'm sorry if I messed that up. Johan Johan. <laughs> Justin? Johan Johan. Johan Johan. Johan Johan Johan. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Mr. Turner, like I've been saying. I think you can cross out the imitation game. I think it's going to come down between Interstellar and the Theory of Everything. The Theory of Everything did win the Golden Globes. Personally, I like the Theory of Everything's music in that a lot. I'm going to go with the Theory of Everything. Of course, I got to go with the king of the scores as of you know right now. Hans Zimmer for Interstellar. That is like... That that is like like porn for your ears, man. <laughs> well, dude, I gotta agree with you. I am predicting, and I hope will win once again. I hope Interstellar wins Best Original Score, and I'm predicting it'll win Best Original Score. I mean, if I have to be honest, I think Best Original Score of the Year, in my opinion, has to be Interstellar. Not only did that score blow me away, but I'm going to predict best original score for Interstellar. Now we go into the final category, the ultimate best picture of the year. Okay, so let's see. For best picture of the year, we only got eight. Yep, no, there's no nine. There's no ten. There's just eight. We got American Sniper, Birdman, Boyhood, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. So, Justin, what do you think will win Best 
picture of the year. All right, yes, eight was a little bit disappointing because um, after we give our predictions, we'll talk about the snubs. There's a couple more spots. I always view it like this. There's always one film in there that is in there. I'm like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? A few years ago, it was extremely loud and incredibly close. I was like, why are you here? Last year, it was Philomena. Like, it, even if not Philomena was good, I'm like, you just popped out of nowhere and you're here. This year, it's American Sniper. Um, yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be in here. You can cross out mostly everything else except for Birdman and Boyhood. It's the competition. It's it's going to be between Boyhood and Birdman. And I honestly cannot tell you right now what my best pick nominee, uh, prediction is because both of them are really good. Both of them are generating a lot of buzz. I'm going to say Boyhood. I think Boyhood, for its achievement in filmmaking, I think it's going to win. I would love to see Whiplash win for Best Picture, but it's not going to happen. It's not. Um, But the Academy is going to choose Birdman. That's who's probably going to win. It's going to be Birdman. And I want to be surprised if they did. You know, I love most of these movies in this category, but the one I think will take the cake is honestly Boyhood. And... I, I predict this because I'm predicting based on the overall filmmaking of the movie. Mm-hmm. Something that's truly out of the ordinary. I mean, look. Look what won Best Picture of two, of the 2014, 12 Years a Slave. And I'm thinking because it took 12 long and dedicated years, years to make Boyhood. So I anything think, that has 12 years in it is going to win Oscars? Uh, I, <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. So, yeah, that's my prediction. I think Boyhood is going to take home the trophy for Best Picture of the Year for the Academy Awards 2015. And now I know you guys have Best Picture snubs, so why don't we go ahead and go ahead and start talking about that. If there was nine spots, I think Nightcrawler definitely would have made it. Agree 100%. Uh, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler, even Snowpiercer. Nightcrawler and Snowpiercer were both snubs to me. I think Snowpiercer was more of a fan favorite, more than in like an Oscar favorite. True, but yeah. that's just how I feel. Yeah, I would love to see Snowpiercer up in there. I think if there was a 10 spot, I think, I'm not saying it's the best film, but Wild. I think Wild or Foxcatcher would have been in there. Or you know what else I'm thinking? I'm actually surprised Gone Girl didn't get oh, the yeah. nomination. Yeah. Like I mean, you, you, you would think nominated for Best Actors. Yeah, like it only got the Best Actress nomination. I mean, I thought Gone Girl was a really good movie. Lisa and, um, an adapted screenplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Interstellar. Now that I think about it, because the, um, I'm noticing Christopher Nolan movies are getting snubbed. I mean, The Dark Knight Rises. When that movie came out, that movie the got The Dark Knight nothing. itself. And knowing the achievement that movie took to create, mm-hmm. knowing it took eight years, eight years for Christopher Nolan and his brother to organize that whole entire script with tons and tons of research. I mean, that's that's what you call dedication right there. But once again, poor Christopher Nolan, he gets snubbed. So, Justin watches movies and WWE fan 0599, I want to thank you both for taking the time to come on here and say your Oscar predictions and just just your overall thoughts on this whole thing. So, thank you to you both very much. Thank you for inviting me. I always love being on your channel. And thank you for inviting me as well. I also love being on your channel as well. Well, thanks to you guys. I always love having you guys being my guests on my channel. If you haven't checked out Justin Watches Movies and WWE Fans channels, please check them out. They both do movie reviews on their channels. Um, Justin, I know he also does unboxings. He gives away UV codes on his channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And let's hope I do better this year than I did in my previous two years because my previous two years... My predictions haven't been really good. This is 22 Tiger Dude. And Justin watches movies. And WWE Fan 0599. And don't forget that the three of us will always have. Tiger 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 Tiger
。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。